We've talked about individual inequalities, and now it's time to talk about what happens when you have groups of inequalities, in other words, systems of inequalities. With a system of equations, the goal is to try and find some values that satisfy both equations at the same time. The situation is the same with a system of inequalities. If we have two inequalities like these, we would like to find all the points in our plane over here that satisfy both of the inequalities at the same time. In this case, I've already graphed the lines. The blue line is the line y equals x minus 1, and the red line is the line y equals negative x plus 3. If we were looking at just the first inequality, we would shade all the points that were above the blue line. That would be this region up here. On the other hand, if we were only looking at the second inequality, we would shade all the points that are below the red line. That would be all the points down here. The solution to the system overall needs to be points that are in both the blue region and also the red region. Well, graphically, that is the overlap of those two regions. And so the solution to the overall system is this region here that is the overlap of the individual solutions. And that's the moral of the story when it comes to systems of inequalities. The overall solution to a system is the overlap between the individual solutions. So just to be clear, points that are in the region up here that is only blue are not solutions to the system. Points that are in the region that is only red down here are not solutions to the system. It is only the points that are in the overlap that are solutions to the system of inequalities. Let's do an example of solving a system of inequalities. Here we have two inequalities, and we want to graph the solution to the system that they comprise. Our first goal is going to be to take each inequality and get it into the usual slope-intercept form with a y by itself. Our first inequality is x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 6. If we want to get the y by itself, we can start by subtracting x from both sides. And then we can divide both sides by 2. And that leaves us with y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 3. Now let's do the same thing with the second inequality, 2x minus y greater than or equal to 5. We can start by subtracting 2x from both sides, which leaves us with negative y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 5. Now we'll divide both sides by negative 1. On the left we get y. On the right we get 2x minus 5. And because we've divided by a negative, the inequality symbol flips around, and now we have less than or equal to. So now we have our two inequalities in the right form. Let's graph the lines and then determine which area to shade. There we go. Now notice that the two lines have divided the plane into four regions. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's label them real quick. We'll just call them A, B, C, and D. The solution to our system is going to be one of these regions. To determine which one, we can look at the inequalities one at a time. Let's start with our red inequality here. If we were solving that by itself, the greater than symbol means that we would want to shade above the red line. Well, that would be regions A and B. On the other hand, with the blue inequality, if we were solving that by itself, we would shade below the blue line, and that would be regions A and D. The region that we included twice is the one that is the overlap of the individual solutions. So region A is the solution to our overall system.